I love the spirit of competition with President Minnesota being the pro-life university in America. I'm going to take that message to some other uh, university presidents and maybe issue a gauntlet challenge here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell them good luck. <laughs> Friends, on June 24th, I felt honored to read the words released seconds before. The Constitution does not confer a right to abortion. Roe and Casey are overruled. Before the pro-life generation, before the entire nation gathered at the steps of the Supreme Court. In the days and the weeks after that moment, abortion facilities across our land have begun to close their doors. Some states have acted courageously to protect women and children from a predatory abortion industry. And children who are scheduled to die, children will be born in just a couple of months. Friends, we no longer live in a nation where abortion is an uncontested norm, endorsed by the highest court of our land. My daughter, my three sons, will grow up in a state like millions others where abortion is completely unavailable. The impact of such a cultural change has yet to even be measured. And we now have a generation, us, those of us who have never known in America without legal abortion, we have been shown that transformation is possible. The abortion industry, Democrats in power and their allies in the mainstream media, and sadly some, those even in our own movement, who publicly admitted they never thought Roe would fall, those are still now rushing to make a case that recent setbacks that pro-lifers have seen right here in Kansas and special elections across the country, that those setbacks prove that now we are losing. To put it bluntly, they are wrong. The battleground has indeed shifted in our country. For the first time in our lifetime, in our lifetime, there is a conversation about abortion, a conversation that seven men silenced in 1973. And the debate is now raging. How do we prevent abortions? When a child feels pain, when their heart begins to beat, or at the very moment of conception, when he became a unique, valuable human being. This is a battleground that the abortion industry cannot win upon. They can't win. But we know our campaign to make abortion unthinkable, unavailable in our nation is far from over. And we expected this moment. In fact, this is why we founded Students for Life more than 16 years ago. For this very time. For such a time as this. We knew this day was going to come. We knew the day would come when Roe and Doe would fall. And we knew at that moment our, mo our movement had to be ready. Had to be ready on every campus, in every community, at every state capitol to lead. This is why I'm honored to say... We serve 1,300 active groups in all 50 states. Why well, I'm honored to say that you all are part of the 150,000 strong pro-life generation army. And now our marching orders could not be more clear. In communities, we must do more to ensure no woman stands alone, to show her that for 50 years we've been supporting, sustaining an entire social safety net, and we're not going away. In fact, we're only redoubling our efforts, increasing our support. But sadly, 75% of the neighbors we have spoken with in 120,000 homes this past year do not know that nonviolent health care alternatives even exist in their community. Friends, they do not know who we are. They do not know that we care more. At our state capitals, we have to demand that our neighbors, those elected officials that we see at mass, that we see in the grocery store, 
that they stand courageously, that they take that 100% pro-life rating that they've always been so proud to have when it comes to election time, and when they recruit you to knock on doors, that they do the hard things. On Capitol Hill, we have to work to see life protected at the moment of conception. And that means from California to New Mexico to New York and to Maine. But in order to achieve this roadmap, the first thing we need to do is we must be unafraid. Unafraid to speak about the violence of abortion and the extremism of those who advocate for it. And we must do so boldly. We've got to this very moment because of the original pro-life generation. This is why we are here in this moment. For when the Supreme Court handed down Roe in 1973 and family and friends told them, stop talking about this, this is decided, they refused silence. Today, tomorrow, and the next day, no matter the profession or vocation you are called to, you must not give in to fear or allow yourself to be silenced because of your pro-life beliefs. You must be innovative and refuse to rest, even when Kansas eventually becomes abortion-free, because deadly chemical abortion drugs are now arriving on our doorsteps in every state across America. These new challenges and the dogged determination by the abortion industry to stop at nothing put not only every child's life at risk, but as well as their mother. And they demand that you act with innovation and with grit. You have to be willing to hope to envision an America without abortion, where abortion is unthinkable and unavailable, and to choose in the peaks and the valleys of our movement, to choose to hold on to that vision, hold it close, for such a long fight will not come without setbacks and moments of questioning. You must choose every day to be undeterred in our pro-life movement's goal. Friends, when President Lincoln issued uh, the Emancipation Proclamation, it did not mean that the day after slavery would end. It did not mean an end to segregation. It did not mean an instant end to discrimination. It did not mean that a black man raised by a working class single mother descended of immigrants would next day become president of the United States. It took 99 years after the end of our civil war which many would argue started right here in bloody Kansas, to get to the signing of the Civil Rights Act. And more work continues to this day. Whether fighting against discrimination and prejudice based on one's skin color, or their age, or their location, or their perception of future abilities, or their parents' crimes, we must not cease in our mission to obtain what Martin Luther King Jr. called a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, over simply a negative peace, which is the absence of violence and tension. And while I certainly pray that the battle before us doesn't take 99 years, you have to remember there is no expiration date for the pro-life movement. Each and every day, our movement moves forward, making the case for the humanity of the preborn, protecting life and law, and in service as much as possible, as quickly as possible, wherever possible, with boldness, innovation, and grit. The prophet Isaiah wrote, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Pro-life Jen, seeing Roe reverse was not our victory. It was our triumph. It was an honor to say that we played a part in that moment. 
but it's not our victory. Our victory will be in what comes next and the courage and the perseverance to do the hard thing, to always seek a positive peace, to put our nation back together by making abortion unthinkable and unavailable in our lifetime. I believe with all my heart, we will achieve this goal. We will absolutely achieve this goal because I have hope in you. For we are the pro-life generation and we will march forward, always forward. Thank you.